In South Sudan, tens of thousands of people have been displaced by recent tribal fighting. The government and the UN has sent more forces to the region, and the UN has warned of a major tragedy unless the situation is resolved. Up to 50,000 are estimated to be without food, water, and shelter. Meanwhile, NGOs, many of whom provide the only services available to local residents, are struggling to maintain their work. For more, we're joined by William Logai On Cheng. He's executive director of Hope or Feria, a non government. Organization that works on development projects in South Sudan. Welcome to FSRN. Thank you. My pleasure. Your staff in South Sudan is located in Toret. That's also where you are from. How close is it to Jongle, where much of the current conflict is taking place? And and is your staff still able to operate there? Uh, Toret is a very Toret is very far from Jongle. We don't operate in Jongle. Of course, even if we work in restricted in Magui County, we still coordinate with so many different non- non-governmental organizations, Sudanese local NGOs, international NGOs. With this current situation that is happening in Jogoli, we are all concerned and we follow it closely. And with that situation, there are reports of people displaced by the current fighting. The UN says tens of thousands uh, have fled the conflict. What kind of support is there for these displaced people? And as far, as far as I know, as somebody who has been working in the ground in southern Sudan during the conflict, uh, I don't think there is any, uh, any support uh, that uh, to talk of that actually are being provided to these people. There are a lot of organizations that are trying to get in. I understand that San Francisco Medicine was actually, they were trying to get into the area and their clinic were burned down and a lot of medicines were taken because of the fight that is taking place now. Of course, there are pockets of relief getting in there, but when you look at the number of people who are displaced, what they get simply is not enough to cover that big number of people who are displaced. The fighting right now is between the Lo Niwe people and the Morolai. What what is the cause of the current conflict and and why this is taking place now? So the the main cause of the fighting or the conflict is actually cattle raiding. If you get my word clearly, cattle raiding means a group of people come and steal cows from one group, and the same group will go back and steal the same cow from people who have stolen from the cow. And the issue is really over that property, over cattle, and over who controls it? Yeah, the issue is when they steal, and then it belongs to the tribal community, it belongs to that tribe as a, a group of people. Because in southern Sudan, as I say, people identify on a tribal line. Say, the Nuer, when they come to... Uh, Say if the Murule comes down to nowhere and they raid cattle. They raid cattle in big numbers. This is not about one or two or three. They take them in hundreds or in thousands. And then this cow belongs to the tribe. Now the Nuer would, would, would like to go back and bring their cow back. And this is where the conflict now will result. Because people who steal this cow from them, the Murule who steal the cow from nowhere, will defend those cows they have stolen. So what will happen as a result? Of course, here, your war will come in. People start shooting each other, either by gun, spears, or whatever. In the process, people die. And this is exactly what is happening now. It is not a political war. It is not uh, political differences. It's complete cattle raiding. Well, if you're describing a long-running conflict such as this, talk about the work that you do with your organization, Hope or Feria, there in South Sudan. How does that connect to uh, these issues uh, of conflict and this issue of which, which inevitably causes displacement of people? Talk about the, the work your organization does in, in, in reference to that. Yeah. What, what, what we do, as I said before, because we know that it is not only far, it is not only Nuer and Murule that have this con, uh, tribal uh, hatred. Across southern Sudan, we have a big problem with the tribal hatred, where one tribe be- believes that they are better than the other tribe, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the whole way from my region all the way to to Jongole, and then from Jongole up to Wow. We have this problem, but what we do as an organization, we realize that if we don't believe in a diversity, we cannot go very far. So we also try to diffuse the attention by having workshop, you see. And tribal war, we also come in and mediate. We have done in the past and we are still doing it even now. We mediated conflict. We have stopped actually fight, which would have occurred through our local educational workshop, uh, what we call reconciliation at the, at, the, at, the, at the community level. 
And you believe the strategy of reconciliation, of, of talking, is possible as a, as a solution for these kinds of conflicts? Yes, I believe that is possible. It is possible on one condition, that the mediator look at both parties that they have a genuine interest in the war. Because nobody can go and die when they don't have genuine interest in that war. Genuine interest result into conflict. Look at the two sides. What is the problem of Murule and what is the problem of the Nuer, which I believe are cattle. So find out their problem and work best from what they want. Don't impose condition. Be neutral. And our approach, even as you see the women we work with, we don't give them what we think is good for them. They tell us what is good for them and we work from what they think is good for them. And I think if they believe that if we use the same approach, or the government in southern Sudan, who are currently engaged in that problem, they look at the problem from the interest of the two parties. They will get a solution, rather than using force. Because force will make things worse. William Logai Ocheng is the executive director with Hope Oferia, a non-governmental organization working in South Sudan. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, and I look forward to talk with you again in the future.